Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining me once again. So lots of stuff going on. Uh, obviously, we have Hurricane Dorian and what's happening in the Bahamas. As more info comes out, it looks to be getting worse and worse and worse, unfortunately, as far as what's actually happened there. Um, first, I want to just uh, start with a personal note. So as you guys know, uh, we basically have a Patreon channel that we've been developing and we were uploading uh, videos through one server and the video I did this morning, uh, which you could see here the title, it obviously hit a nerve and so they took down the whole channel immediately. So I had to spend the morning finding another server and re-uploading uh, videos <laughs> that were on Patreon. So they're all back up, including the one that caused the, uh, the other server to take down the channel. You know, there are some topics that you're not allowed to talk about anymore. And, um, you know, it's getting to be uh, worse and worse, really, as far as this goes. And the more you look into it, and I've covered the case some cases of people who have actually made choices for their children when it comes to uh you know health care and which ways to go and unfortunately they've ended up behind bars and the kids taken away from them and this is happening more and more more and more and i'm seeing more and more cases of this and it's, it's super scary and it's, it's not, you know, how things are supposed to be. Uh, so I want to thank all our new Patreons. Uh, we had about 10 new Patreons yesterday. So more and more are coming on and uh, subscribing over there. And so for as little as a dollar a month to support the channel, uh, you'll get access to the videos that we're throwing up over there, which again are videos that would be, uh, uh, for the most part, an issue over on this venue and obviously on others. As that other, uh, the last one, you know, caused the uh, termination of the Vimeo account. So this is what's going on, guys. This is what's going on. You know, it's just, um, it's just getting worse and worse. And it's really, this is systematic. And it's not just this channel, you know, it's, it's, and it's not just even YouTubers, really. Um, this is something that's huge. This is, uh, truly, it's very Orwellian when we think about it. And Keith has the right word. You know, that's, that's part, we could tell that that is one of the most major parts of this agenda going on. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys and thank everybody for the support on Patreon you know, as, you know, this keeps progressing. And, you know, just on a personal note, you know, we roll with the punches. Um, as time has gone along for me, I've shed more and more belongings to the point where, as I've said, I could pack everything that I own in the back of my pickup truck and go because I just don't have a lot of things, which is okay uh, because I don't really want a lot of things. Uh, it's good to feel free. If it's good to feel not tied to things, it's good to be able to be mobile as well. And yeah, Michelle, you're, you're totally right. It is very reminiscent of what happened back then. And, uh, it, it is, it's starting to happen now. If you guys are history buffs, you could see it. This is most definitely what's going on. And, uh, you know, when things get to the, a certain point, you know, me personally, I'm just, I'm just going to end up driving off, you know, and living out of a travel trailer in the middle of nowhere. And that's kind of my plan at this point, uh, just because of everything that's going on. And uh, it it's peaceful to be out in the middle of nowhere. It really is. I love being out in the middle of nowhere. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, I've been blessed with no interference going live, which has been beautiful. 
uh, some changes to things and learning more uh, technologically because I have not been the most adept at that. Dr. Mike's talking about taking a religious exemption, and a lot of those things are going to be going bye-bye as well. So there's a lot of that going on. For It's so good to see you guys uh, all here again. So many familiar faces and names. It's wonderful. Glad you guys are all here. Uh, Weed Me says, so how are thousands missing? You know, think about it too. That's a tourist area. So there's, at such a huge tourist area, how do you even really know who's there? You know, by the time you figure out who is all there and then who's missing, yeah, this is really, it's a huge tragedy that we see unfolding. So if we look at uh, Dorian right now, we could see that it's basically uh, off the coast of Virginia. It's done its damage through the Carolinas. And, uh, you know, Florida made out pretty well compared to what could have been. I mean, there was a huge Cat 5 storm not far from the, course of the coast of Florida. And so we do have some flooding. We see over here that hundreds are trapped on a North Carolina island right now. And so the storm struck the islands, popular with holiday makers, days after causing at least 30 deaths in the Bahamas. And actually, that, that could end up becoming so much higher. Uh, Roy Cooper warned the storm surges on the island of Okokoki, where over 800 people were said to have stayed behind. In the Bahamas, officials say hundreds, possibly thousands, are missing. The official death toll is, is expected to increase to a staggering level. The country's government has said officials are sending morticians and 200 body bags to the Abaco Islands, the worst hit part of the archipelago. And the public needs to prepare for unimaginable information about the death toll and the human suffering. So said the health minister, Dwayne Sands, on local radio. And so there's videos here and you could just, you know, see in people's own words, hear in people's own words, what they saw, what they were going through. So the storm made landfall at Cape Hatteras at 9 o'clock local time with winds at 90 miles an hour, but by 11 uh, local time, its eye had moved to about 50 miles to the northeast. However, it lashed the outer banks with hurricane force winds as far as 45 miles away from the eye and with tropical storm winds up to 200 miles away. And, you know, if you guys have been on the Outer Banks, it's it's one of my favorite places in the country. It's just beautiful, but there's no way I could live there. Absolutely no way, because you could see uh, the water all around you. And you have houses that are like 15 feet off the ground in many places because of the flooding that's come from these storms. And, you know, when we've heard what's going on and we've seen the devastation from these storms it, it's just incredible and I, I can't imagine writing out things out there I really can't even though it is so beautiful and I love the area as we see now so it's heading out and it'll be heading for uh, Canada probably as a tropical storm so the damage to the Bahamas in, is just unimaginable, and it really is the level that we saw with Hurricane Michael, but just on a bigger scale. And this is going from the watchers also talking about Dorian and the toll it's taken. Things could have been worse on the mainland, for sure. Uh, but what happened in the northern islands of the Bahamas is so reminiscent of the damage that Michael brought and also the damage that we saw over with um, Puerto Rico and you know it took Puerto Rico so long just to get the power back and some of those smaller islands down there they were just completely decimated with like 90 percent of the buildings destroyed just totally totally destroyed incredible and as we said, the death toll is expected to be staggering, you know, with thousands, thousands missing. And this, I watched this video, and, and this gentleman, I don't even know if he's in shock yet. He, uh, he describes the, the situation that he went through, and he's in the Bahamas, in a house, 
where the water rose to be around 19 to 20 feet deep where his house is. Him, his wife, the dogs, the cat, they were all on the first floor and uh, they were able to just get and keep their heads above water. There was only like a foot space, just enough to get your mouth up there to, to gasp and breathe. And the dogs and the cat swimming too. And then he said he saw his wife just say, his wife said to him, I think I'm going to die. And then she just basically inhaled some water in and did. And then he swam down and through the doorway and got to the outside. And he saw that the only thing he could do was swim for it. And he did. And somehow he survived. But he lost everything, his wife and his animals and uh, obviously the property and uh, he, they don't. He doesn't know where her body is because it just, you know, is either in the house or got swept away. And this is what's happened to so many people. And uh, it's just so sad to listen to it. It just brings tears to your eyes as you see this incredible damage. And think about this thing again because this thing just was going along, and then it just like it hit an invisible wall, and was just simply standing there and staying there uh, and it's very similar to Florence in the sense that it was moving out like one mile an hour two mile an hour for so long just like Florence the only difference is that was a cat five at the time and Florence was a cat one so night and day there just absolutely tragic and so sad you know to see the suffering and that poor gentleman, you know, I don't think he was even officially in shock yet. It, it just, I don't even think it registered as he was being interviewed. And there's so many people like that now. Lolly Loving says this is a quiet war. And so many of us have that feeling. So many of us have that feeling. It's just these these things don't seem to make sense with the way that they're moving. And just how strong they get. And it's just so sad. So sad to see. And so we have Mount Etna getting more restless. Values comparable to those seen shortly before 2018 eruption in Italy. And uh, it is an active one and a famous volcano at all as well. And uh, we have yet another asteroid, 2019 RC1, fly by Earth at 0.48 lunar distance on the 7th. And uh, that will be the 40th of the year. So quite a few coming by. And many believe that we're in the tail of Nibiru or some sort of system like the Nemesis system. It's a lot of interesting stuff to delve into and research there as well. And here out of Electroverse, Colorado's record-breaking 2018-2019 snowpack is still substantial, especially for September. Last winter was a hugely snowy one for the Colorado mountains, featuring an especially active back half. And a lot of that snowpack has sat tight, faring incredibly well through the summer months. So snowstorm after snowstorm burned, buried the mountains on a regular basis last season, and much colder and average temperatures persisted deep into spring and a lot of it has made its way all through the summer and so we've been watching this as well this is total arctic sea ice volume and so we see where we are right now and now is about where it starts to typically curve and instead of melting away in the summer months it starts to build again and so when we look at this, again, this gray zone, the light gray zone, that's the combined years of 2004 through 2013. And again, the volume is the extent and the depth. So that's the total amount of what you have. So currently, the only year that had less volume than currently was 2016. And 2016 took a little dip. There must have been a little bit of a warm up there. And then it started to go on up. And we can see that it's starting to curve upwards now. And 2019, again, is the black line there. Interestingly enough, the blue line is uh, 2018. So that was last year. So the trend <coughs> kind of reversed itself this year as far as building Arctic uh, sea ice in total. 
But then again, you know, we got to question even all the data, all the data. Uh, you know, who do we really trust now with data? So leaves are changing color early in the Twin Cities. And uh, people have been reporting that, that things seem strange. There's a, a lot of dead plants, a lot of bleached out plants and all. But and you also have some areas where the leaves are turning kind of quick. And we have Greenland's forecast to be as much as 16 degrees centigrade, but low average for the majority of September. So we're going to watch that. And do you guys feel that it's going to be a real tough winter? You know, <clears throat> we've talked about health, too, and we've talked about just how much our health is in some ways, you know, under attack with the environment and everything that's surrounding us. And we've talked about it from an energy standpoint, you know, with all the things that are around us energetically. We've talked about the things in the sky and we've talked about GMOs. We've talked about how the fact is that, you know, really when you get down to it, even organic food is, you know, they're finding glyphosate in, in that. And, uh, yeah, and we've found that all over in mother's milk as well. So, you know, we really need to be so cognizant of what we are taking into our bodies now because you want to be building your immune system in these times. You want to be strengthening yourself. You want to get into better shape, as good a shape as possible. So many people are suffering from so many different ailments, chronic ailments. It's incredible. And more and more people uh, are suffering from some things that, you know, you, again, we're, we're not supposed to label on this uh, medium as well, but which we are very suspicious of. So when you see this, you know, a teen's junk food diet ended up causing him to go blind because of malnutrition. You know, it's such a n atrocity that in, in these days when we have such knowledge available to everyone, uh, so many are still opting to just simply save the money in some cases and eat off the dollar menu. And it is sad that, you know, a healthy organic salad uh, will cost way more than just, you know, a dollar menu from any of the junk restaurants that are out there. And so this teen, he ate nothing but fries, chips, and other junk food for years. He slowly went blind as a result of his diet. And it really, it could happen in, in our, uh, you know, relatively wealthy Western society, most definitely, if you don't pay attention to it. And so... Honestly, it kills me when I see kids, you know, drinking things that are pure sugar, eating things that have 16 different ingredients, and maybe only two of them are recognizable food products. <laughs> you know, it's not helping the situation at all. We really have to be cognizant of what we're feeding our kids. And a lot of times we think, oh, we're going to give them a treat. And hey, I was guilty of that too, you know, uh, when my kids were younger of, you know, thinking, you know, hey, uh, going to give them a treat. We're going to stop by and we're going to get them this or that, you know, something that they want to make them happy. But are you really doing them a favor favor when you're giving them this, these junk meals that will end up causing a lot of health problems? And there's a lot of stuff in these. I mean, they've, they've found an ingredient that they put in yoga mats in Subway's bread. There's so much going on here uh, behind the scenes, and the food, especially the junk food, is so toxic. And speaking of toxic, there's more toxic algae reports. And so, you know, this is in Pennsylvania. Toxic algae detected in Francis Slocum Lake after another dog's death. Many, many animals, many pets have, have died now due to this toxic algae. And you know, anybody in the area around it too, you know it's affecting your health just being close to it. So there again, it's imperative for us to be as healthy as possible. And we have the worst flu season on record going on in Australia right now. So be mindful of that. This is the worst one in recorded history. Over 257,359 confirmed cases so far this year. And so it, it, bre it beat the 2017's record, which had 251,163 cases. 
And meanwhile, only 52,000 cases were confirmed in 2018. So this is interesting because everything, it seems right now, when it comes to any sort of disease right now, it seems like they're all just popping out of the woodwork and they're setting records left and right. And as we go on down the line, New Zealand measles outbreak rises to above a thousand cases. And, you know, obviously measles is highly contagious. It's potentially fatal, but it's nothing like some of the other ones that are out there. Like the EEE, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, West Nile, Ebola. Um, it just goes on and on with what's out there. And so worldwide, the number of cases has quadrupled in the first three months of 2019 compared to last year. Interesting. And uh, as you see what they say here, I do think that's a big part of it. It's a big part of everything that we're seeing here. And I know a lot of you guys think too, uh, along the same lines, hepatitis A outbreak in Las Vegas. And here's the question. What do you guys think? Is this part of everything that we're seeing? And, you know, this being the key word right there. And, you know, that was part of what I was talking about over on Patreon this morning that caused all the problems. Texas veterinarian technician infected with murine typhus. And so we're seeing a lot of these things. And so this is flea spread. And uh, everywhere you look, these things are just popping out of the woodwork. And here you see, this is out of the California Globe. It's talking about typhus, talking about bubonic plague. All these things with the situation. So many people living in these tent cities and how things can spread so easy. So, so easy. And it's curious, too, because in this particular article they go all biblical on us talking about Moses and Aaron and the Lord said to Moses say to Aaron take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt over their rivers their canals their ponds all their pools of water so that they may become blood and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt even in the vessels of wood and the vessels of stone Moses and Aaron did just as they were told and plague after plague descended on Egypt while God ordered the plagues and the Freedom Brothers played their assigned roles, Pharaoh is responsible for the devastation. He enslaved the Jews and refuses to free them until enough screws got turned on him that he had to utter whatever the ancient Egyptian equivalent of uncle was. Or in the MMA word, world, he tapped out, <laughs> so to speak. And so fast forward a few epochs and the City of Angels has a hell of a problem. It's starting to look like some of the worst times of the past. L.A. is suffering its own host of plagues right now, like ancient Egypt before it. Its leaders are responsible and its pe people suffer. According to Dr. Drew Pinsky, L.A. is experiencing a complete breakdown of the basic needs of civilization with an exploding health crisis in the off offering. And, uh, you know, you have un plague one, uncontrollable rats and other rodents. They're overrunning L.A., Thanks to the next two plagues, Plague 2, sanitation gone mad, L.A. is failing to pick up the trash, particularly the garbage dropped by an exploding homeless population, which is part of a bigger problem, and Plague 3, urine and fecal matter everywhere. And what's up with that? There's so much of that going on. And you know, that is actually uh, something that was brought to my attention, that over in um, Asia, is something that happens a lot as well and it's really really common for people to just relieve themselves out in public in the streets which is kind of crazy and not in all parts of Asia but in uh, one person was telling me about this in China where he was teaching he was doing uh, teaching English and so Riverton officials confirmed three cases of plague in family dogs as we see just it, it's just everywhere Six cases of mumps investigated in uh, Bernalillo County, and that's in New Mexico. Five more horses in New Jersey die after contracting EEE. 
and mumps, hundreds of cases after Nottingham student outbreak over in UK. And then this is really curious and interesting. A large underwater observatory mysteriously disappears without a trace. So a large monitoring station used to gather important scientific data in the Baltic Sea has mysteriously disappeared. Divers were dispatched to the site only to find that the entire structure was gone, with the exception of a shredded transmission cable. So the underwater observatory, which had been on the seafloor since December 2016, is managed by the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research. And so on August 21st at 8.15 p.m., local time transmissions from the station came to a halt. Divers were dispatched to the site only to find, much to their astonishment, that the entire structure was gone, save for a transmission cable. First, we thought it must just be a transmission error, but when they went, the devices were gone. The divers could not find them anymore. When the divers reached the bottom of the sea last week at the observatory's location, they found only the torn cable, and it was completely shredded. So the missing observatory consists of two racks, one weighing 550 pounds, the other 220 pounds each. These racks include a frame holding the power supply and a frame to hold the sensors. Both racks were removed with great force from their position. And the observatory was in a restricted area off the northern coast of Germany. Both, including fishing vessels, are not allowed into the area. That someone or a group of individuals removed it remains the most plausible explanation. Other factors such as a massive storm, heavy currents, or even marine animals were ruled out as potential causes owing to the weight of the instruments. So who or what removed it is a mystery. Very interesting. Very interesting. Who removed it? So is it submarines? Is it, you know, some sort of military operation to remove it? Uh, was this removed by hmm, perhaps ETs, uh, inner earth people, or if you guys remember the NOMO, do you guys remember the NOMO? Well, check this out. These terrifying mermaid mummies are the stuff of nightmares. The oceans are believed to hide mysterious creatures, including sea serpents and mermaids, which have captured human imaginations for ages. And as shown below, some up appear to be quite terrifying. And so here you see a mermaid mummy exposed at the National Museum of Ethnology in Leiden, the Netherlands. This mummified creature was obtained by Jan Koch Blumhoff while serving as director of Dejima, the Dutch trading colony at Nagasaki Harbor. It now resides in the National Museum of Ethnology at Leiden. So what is that? Is that supposed to be real, or is that somebody's little doll? And uh, if you guys are familiar with um, some of the ancient alien shows, and we've seen on Gaia, them talking about these these tiny little mummified remains of these beings, uh, not always like a mermaid, sometimes like the little gray aliens that we, we find in different locations, and they appear to be biological. Very curious. Do you think this little guy was ever alive? <laughs> ever swimming around here we have the beast mermaid mummy another old mermaid mummy exhibited at a museum in Tokyo again around Japan and shown below appears to belong to the founder of Hirano Agricultural Museum the mummy's origin is unknown the collector says it was found in a wooden box that contained passages from a Buddha sutra written in Sanskrit very interesting. Also in the box was a photograph of the mermaid and a note claiming it belonged to a man from Wakayama Prefecture. And, you know, that looks pretty interesting and authentic. Look at the nails on the hands. Look at those teeth. You know, if this is made and manufactured, it's, it's a pretty good job. It's pretty curious. I mean, it could be manufactured for sure. Yeah, I think that's the obvious thing. Do you think there's any chance that things like this actually lived? Here we have the alien mermaid mummy. And this one was also found in Osaka. So again, off the coast of Japan. It was bestowed to the temple as an offering in 1682. 
and it's got like a little alien skull. Pretty curious. And here we have the screaming mermaid mummy. So another terrifying mermaid body is preserved, and this is in Kashiwa, Kashiwazaki. And so this is also in, in Japan as well. This one's 30 centimeters long, holding up its hands near its cheeks. And this was kept in a small wooden chest out of view. They'll allow you to check it out if you ask nicely. And we have another. And this one is outside the city of Hashimoto. And this one's 50 centimeters long, has fangs that protrude from its wide open mouth, and both of its hands are raised to its cheek, just like the previous one. Lower body covered in scales, there appears to be the vestiges of fins on its chest, as well as a pair of nipple-like protuberances. And then we have, the next photo shows the largest, this is 5 foot 6 inches, and the oldest, 1400 years old, no mermaid mummy in Japan. It has an unusually large bald head, except from its forehead to its nose. Its eyes and mouth are open. It has webbed hands with sharp claws and a 20 centimeter long tail. The lower body has a bone structure similar to that of a fish, but it's unclear whether or not the upper body has a bone structure. Pretty interesting. Legend has it that this mermaid appeared to Prince Shotuku as he was passing along the shores of Lake Biwa about 1400 years ago. The hideous beast told the prince about how it had been transformed into a mermaid as punishment for making a living as a fisherman within the boundaries of an animal sanctuary. The mermaid claims that over many years it had come to, to a clear understanding of the horrors of destroying life and that it was prepared to move on to the next world. As a final wish before dying, though, it asked the, pr the, pr the prince to establish a temple using the mermaid's body as a centerpiece where it could be used to educate people about the sanctity of life. The mermaid then died, and the prince took the mermaid's body and set up a temple as requested. It's thought to be the Canon Shoji Temple in Shiga Prefecture, which is nicknamed the Mermaid Temple. But after a number of strange occurrences, the mummy was passed on to another temple. The mummy changed hands several times before ending up at its current location at the base of Mount Fuji. So I wonder if they would ever let anybody do any sort of DNA analysis on these things. It'd be very, very interesting. Don't know what you guys think about that, but it gets me thinking about um, Dagon, for one. Uh, Eons or Yoans, the fish gods of the uh, Middle East, you know, ancient Sumeria. Very interesting, you know, and it's it's a universal thing. We see these beings and uh, supposedly very intelligent, very wise, teaching man. Here you see the Chaldean god Ea, and again, Ea in Sumerian uh, mythology became Enki where Ea was is his name, and then he became Enki, or Lord of the Earth, and Lil, Lord of the Heavens. And uh, interesting with the goat head as well. Many people have surmised that Ea, Enki, is the serpent from the, the Bible, the Garden of Eden. And then some believe that he really wasn't uh, you know, so much the bad guy, because Enlil was the one that just wanted humanity gone. And... He warned uh, humanity and allowed there to be some survivors when the flood came. And interestingly enough, that he was really kind of the god of the waters, as well as he's always associated with water. And then we have the Nagas. And I've done a video on the Nagas in the past. And so Nagas are always shown as serpents in some form, usually as human to the waist, but with the body of a snake instead of legs. Some are shown as humans with heads of snakes, and others have seven snake heads growing from their back. And so legend has it that some of the Nagas live under the sea, others live in the mystical underworld city of Bhogavati. Others say that the large anthills cover the entrance to the underworld where the secret city is located. And uh, interesting too, you know, over here in uh, Arizona and in Nevada and into California, the underground cities and stuff. There's also legends of, of snake-like beings again. So it comes from the Sanskrit word nag, which means snake. 
the body of a snake, the human waste, several snake heads, and, and again, Nagas live under the sea and also in the inner earth. And uh, the legendary origin, they believe it's uh, Hindu, but when we hear about the Nagas, they're also associated with Mu and Lemuria. And um, apparently, not always really negative. Some of them could be actually fairly benevolent, always associated with wisdom. And there are legends that when Lemuria sank, some of them went to different parts of the world and some went underground, as well as some other citizens of Lemuria, such as the Telosians, which settled in uh, Mount Shasta, according to legend as well. But the Telosians look like what we would call Pleiadians. You know, for the most part, um, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, very humanoid. And we see all over Southeast Asia these type of statues with snake-like bodies on, you know, from the waist down and human-like heads. It's a very, very common theme that we see. And here again, we're seeing Ia Enki. And again, associated with water, you see the fishes all around him. It's kind of interesting when you look at all the symbolism. And this is uh, from N5D.com. And uh, Greg Prescott owns that. And he's down in Sarasota, uh, where I was also living before. N5D is a, a, a good channel, lots of interesting stuff, talks about uh, ascension, but also our hidden history, just as this channel does. And I've talked about this a million times. You know, why is the Pope's miter hat shaped like a fish? Because it's basically the connection to Dagon, to, to Yoans. It's all that connection that goes back to ancient Sumeria and perhaps beyond that. Maybe that's not even the original stories. And <clears throat> I think some people are starting to wake up to that possibility as well. Perhaps that's not the original stories. Maybe that's yet one other intermediary. Although, you know, we have so much info. There are hundreds of thousands of these tablets, hundreds of thousands that are all telling the same stories. So we see, you know, look at the head of Dagon, the fish god of Babylon, the mitre hat of a bishop. And we see here <clears throat> the ancient Sumerians. Again, is it symbolic? Like, are the wings symbolic? Do they actually have wings? Like when we think about angels, we automatically think, well, they have wings, right? We just assume that because that's the folklore that has built up over the ages. But were they given wings to symbolize that they were able to fly? And is that because they had vehicles that could fly? And the same thing, are they given the fish head, the fish uh, body and everything to symbolize that they could just go right into the water? So was it technology? Did, were they able to just have breathing apparatuses and they could just go straight into the water and take off? because they could breathe underwater indefinitely or go into a ship that would go underwater. There's been a lot of UFOs connected with with underwater bases and also inner earth bases. Very, very interesting stuff. And as we know, too, you know, the, the symbol of the fish is the symbol of Christianity as well. And we take that to be the Piscean Age. But is it even something more? So, you know, it's all very, very fascinating when you look at it. Lots of different things going on there in our hidden history. So what do you guys think about all that? How deep is this hidden history? Is our reality that we've been sold just nothing but a bunch of bunk? It's all very interesting. And so, what are the influences on the planet? Now, obviously, we could see that the powers that be, they don't seem to love the, the planet because the, the, the way that they operate has been just one of really devastation to the planet, as we've talked about. 
you know, with all the poisoning. I mean, look at everything we're seeing. All the poisoning, all the runoff, you know, the fact that mother's milk has, has so many, I forget if it was like 15 different or it was more than that, um, different toxic chemicals that they've found in mother's milk. And uh, Lolly Loving says, amazing stuff, we have to relearn everything. Yeah, it is. You know, it is. I mean, we have to relearn because we've been just basically told that so many things are fairy tales and so many things aren't real. And then we've been, you know, taught to fear certain things that perhaps would be things, ways, means of deciphering and finding the truth. So we've been taught to fear the things that perhaps could illuminate us. And uh, it's pretty amazing. Lutsuro Bune legend. I have not seen that. So Soul Reviver is saying Utsuro Bune legend. That would no, I haven't seen that. That sounds interesting. Oh. Well, that looks very much like a typical uh, saucer, doesn't not? So this was an unknown object that allegedly washed ashore in 1803 in Hitachi province. So w part of what I was getting at with that, and sometimes I lose track of thought, is that, you know, all these little things washed up on Japan. Well, supposedly those type of beings, these mermaid type creatures, these creatures that are very much like Dagon and uh, the Nagas also, they were supposedly living on Lemuria Mu, which was right there in the Pacific. So to have all these interesting items, these <laughs> mummies, be there would kind of make sense if that's where these things were living. And so many people believe that Lemuria was real. It was definitely a real culture uh, that has gone. Now, some people have said that they believe it was a either a fourth density or fifth density um, civilization. So it was a civilization during a golden age is what some people have said. Very well could be as well. Um, interesting stuff. But yeah, this is another curious thing that washed ashore the coast of Japan. And so bune means boat wa while utsuru means empty or hollow. Well, it very well could be. It looked very much like a traditional UFO. So that is pretty interesting. Most definitely. Lots of curious things. And I love it when you guys throw out things like that that I never heard of before. It's awesome, you know, because it just gives you more things to go and do some research on. And uh, there's so much research that we will be doing once we uh, get an opportunity to get out there. I'd like to do some more uh, exploring around the Grand Canyon and around uh, Death Valley, and especially in those areas uh, once it gets cooler, <laughs> you know, so it's safer. Uh, in some of those areas where supposedly they had discovered uh, the entrance to the underground city, the problem is... So many of these locations now, they're military bases. And so DR4DDED uh, says that they're confused because, yeah, we, we started talking about the Hurricane Dorian, and as is our the way we go with this, we cover many subjects. Um, so we started with Hurricane Dorian, and then we've rolled into other things as well, and um, which is just something that we do. Uh, as far as Hurricane Dorian goes, if we want to do a recap on that, there are definitely thousands missing. And as we've talked about, so much destruction. Here you see Red Cross fears 45% of all the homes on Grand Bahama and Abacos. Some 13,000 properties severely damaged or destroyed. You know, parts of the Bahamas received up to 35 inches of rain. But you know what? It was the storm surge, too. The storm surge was enormous. As uh, we had talked about, this one gentleman, let's see where it was, I think it was, yeah, here, 
you know, his house was under 19 to 20 feet of water. 19 to 20 feet of water. And so uh, when it comes to doing titles, you're only limited to, I think, like 95 characters or something like that. So uh, I would love to entitle things with a much longer title, but you're limited in what you can title. So typically in one of our daily updates, we'll touch on 20 or 30 things. And this this is a major, obviously the major story that we're talking about. And so it, it makes me wonder too, when are we ever going to find out the real numbers? Will we ever find out the real numbers? Remember in Puerto Rico, um, they kept sticking to like 200 or 100 and something. And then like a whole year later, they came out with a number like 1,840 something gone. You know, it just, it jumped up like ninefold. And yes, we need to send out our prayers to everyone. There could be still people that you never know might be trapped and still alive as well. And then, of course, like what we were talking about when we started, there are people in um, North Carolina right now. There's hundreds trapped on the North Carolina island. And hopefully that situation is getting rectified and people are being taken off safely. Again, the storm surge here um, at this time shouldn't be have been as great as it was in the Bahamas. That was an incredible storm surge, incredible. But still, uh, most definitely these people were in danger as well, may still be in danger. So again, let's send our prayers, our best intentions and best wishes for them as well. And uh, Indigo Scorpio says this was the first wave. I think we got that feeling, brother. We definitely do. A test of defenses and reaction to multiple attacks. Yeah, well, we see the waves. There's more waves building. There's more tropical waves out there. And, uh, you know, we know that there's going to be more coming. And uh, as Melissa says, plagues are coming to them now and uh, coming all over the world now. Most definitely. They're everywhere you look. And it's just about everyone you could think of is coming back, whether it's polio, measles, mumps, rubella, they're all coming back. And uh, 2020 is a big number, most definitely. I, you know, 2024 is supposed to be the year everything is just, it's a different reality that we're in. But many people believe 2020 into 2021 is going to be a huge escalation. A huge, a huge escalation. And we could see I still think from August 2017 when we had that eclipse, it just feels like after that eclipse happened, everything went crazy. You know, we had the three hurricanes, one right after another. Everything just seemed to go crazy after the eclipse. And there's those people that think that that was the beginning of the tribulation period that will culminate in 2024. And it is very curious because then there's that other eclipse uh, that's coming in 2024. So it's, um, you know, it, it is a curious thing. And uh, is it all divine? Is it all manufactured? Is it a combo? And uh, Indigo Scorpio, appreciate you, appreciate your comments all the time. It's good to have you here with us. There's a lot going on. And just as Dr. Four was saying, Learn basic CPR, most definitely. Be an asset to your community. Uh, help guide people that are sleepwalking, that don't have a clue about what's going on. And many don't. Many are completely head in the sand. So, you know, do whatever precautions you can do. Get, get everybody as woke up in your family and your friends, immediate neighbors as you can. You know, a lot of people, they're just, they're only concerned with what Nicki Minaj is doing and that's so crazy and sad uh, but some people are just caught up in all the BS that the world has to offer and are not recognizing what's going on and you just don't see the coverage in the mainstream of all the things that are going on that's kind of you know hidden unless it's right in your neighborhood Yeah, uh, Soul Revivers bringing up again uh, incinerators. You know, it's, again, besides preparing, uh, well, I shouldn't even say besides, in addition to preparing and perhaps 
first and foremost, get as strong and healthy as you can. You know, eat whole foods. Learn what things are natural, um, natural ways of fighting things, especially viruses and bacteria. Have plenty on hand. Have enough for five to ten years on hand. Try to, you know, like say with colloidal silver, we make our own uh, on, a, on a daily basis. So instead of even like relying on buying it, actually, you know, go ahead and make your own because it's not really a hard process. And um, I would also stockpile all these type of things. Echinacea, we've talked about so many things that are very, very healthy. Uh, and even such basic things as garlic as a blood purifier, you're definitely going to want to be taking in chlorella, spirulina, wheatgrass, things along those lines, blood purifiers, and keeping yourself nice and as alkaline as possible as well. And uh, Sassy Susie says you could get generators on eBay. You know, generators, and again, that they might only last so long depending on what's fueling your generator. And if you're, you know, out in the desert, then, you know, you can have a solar system put into place if you have the ability to do it. And that will be wonderful because we don't know how long gas and propane will last. What we see going on now, it, it shows no signs of abating at all. It seems to be increasing and seems to be hitting more and more areas. So again, we need to prepare as best we can. And um, think about where you're at. The people here, you know, and, and out here in the middle of the uh, nowhere <laughs> where we currently are, um, for the most part, they have no clue anything's happening because nothing's happening here. Uh, there's no floods. There's nothing like that. Now, there are sources of water. Thankfully, there are springs and underground water sources here. Um, but water would be a big issue in the desert in most places. But at the same time, uh, in some areas, like if you're in uh, southern Arizona up through Phoenix and all, you can get the monsoon rains. Monsoon rains can hit kind of anywhere uh, as well, but everybody has their own issues that they're facing. So much of the country, I mean, we're already we're probably, we might be forgetting about the Nebraska floods. Did you see, I mean, you guys remember what happened to Nebraska? It's just, you know, when we see the latest one, our attention goes there. So, you know, now we're just focused on the devastation in the Bahamas. And maybe we start to forget Hurricane Michael or Florence or, you know, all the other ones that have gone through and the other, you know, issues that we had. And, uh, you know, St Stack says nowhere is safe. Yeah, no, there is no perfect place. There most definitely is no perfect place. Every, every place is going to have some issues. Stack is in uh, Ohio. You know, parts of Ohio should be pretty good. Parts of Ohio could be very, very challenging. Yeah, it's so good to see all you guys and, and to hear you guys. And I know you guys are awake. And that's a beautiful thing. So it's up to us to wake up others. So the EEA family will try to wake up as many other family members individually as we can and uh dr4 is talking about the navy map showing arizona underwater yeah parts of arizona and um you know you gotta wonder about those I, i'm not sure how much i trust those maps too when you start looking into the origins of them you know do we even trust the navy <laughs> you know again who's controlling who um and I've, I've heard there's those people that believe that when we even are talking about our military forces, that they're not actually even unified. And some have said that the Navy are uh, some of the only ones that are still looking out for our well-being. It's all kind of interesting. And if you ever followed anything that you got from uh, Gaia, like with, um, you know, Corey Good and stuff and many people believe he's a disinfo agent it's a sad world but we can't trust anybody and a lot of the sources will give you 80 90 percent truth and then there's that 10 percent in there that's mixed in that gets you off on the right track on the wrong track i should say 
um, that confuses us. So, yeah, all we could do is basically prepare as best we can, take care of our own, reach out to the greater community, pray for everybody, and send you know, positive energy and intentions out to all the people that are suffering and do our own best on a personal level. And, um, you know, as Heather was, Heather Dawn was bringing up the name Epstein, you know, so much of those things which we thought, maybe we thought it was just all rumors and kind of BS. It's just like the theories that we had back in the 80s that maybe microwaves aren't so good for you. Maybe some of the nonstick cookware is not that good for you. Maybe fluoridated water is not that good for you. You know, all these things seem to always turn out to be actually verified later on. And there's much more that we're questioning right now. You know, that, that me, and I, I'm betting strongly, is going to turn out to be dead on. And so the, the missing part to all this is the fact that our consciousness is changing. The energy coming into us is changing the planet. It's changing our consciousness, changing our solar system, and perhaps our whole section of the galaxy, if not the entire galaxy itself. So this is a time of great change. We talked about the photon belt, and we talked about going back into a golden age. So we have to hold on you know, to that thought and that, those prospects. And the golden age that I know you and I want and envision is not one <laughs> that's filled with uh, a merger with AI and robotics and that seems to be what some are pushing out there so yes most definitely there's a lot of red pills going on uh, with the masses right now there most definitely is so my friends as always I thank you for your support and I invite everyone to become a patreon uh, just a dollar a month or whatever you want to do will help keep the channel going and then you get uh, access to the videos that go up over there as well, which um, are videos that won't end up on YouTube. And thank you also for your support with Ko-Fi. And as always, like, share, subscribe. And I look forward to your comments, my friends. Stay healthy out there. Stay strong and keep spreading the, keep spreading the news to everybody as we keep waking people up. God bless, my friends. Namaste.